We're live from Chevy Chase. Welcome back. It's now time for Talk of the Town, and today we're talking to a Derby and Oaks historian. And this is perfectly timed as we have the Kentucky Derby and Oaks coming up this week. Joining us with the details on her book, The Kentucky Oaks, is author and racing historian, Avalyn Hunter. Hi. Hi, very pleased to meet both of you. Absolutely. So I'm a big history lover, mm -hmm. and what more better, t more better? That's, <laughs> we'll go with that. And she's an English major. Yeah. Don't hold it against me, <laughs> Avalyn. Uh, what more appropriate thing to talk about this week than the Oaks and the mm -hmm. Kentucky Derby? And you've written on both of those topics. Uh, let's correct. start with your book about black gold. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Okay, Black Gold was the 50th Kentucky Derby winner, so this is the 100th anniversary of his win. Mm. And some of you may be familiar with the fact that he had a very tragic history behind him. If you've read Margaret Henry's beloved children's book on him, then you know all about that, that he lost his life at the fairgrounds in 1928. Yes. But before that, there was a great triumph, and that was the 1924 Derby, which he won by half a length. Mm. Yeah, uh, what a great story. And what developed your love for writing about uh, horse racing? I don't know. It just sort of came <laughs> to me from birth. My father had a picture of me trying to climb over a fence into a field of broodmares when we were living in the Aww. Louisville area many years ago. And uh -huh. I was about three years old and wearing, you know, a little frilly dress and little Mary Janes because that's what you wore when of you were driving yeah. <laughs> yeah. at the time. And well, he peeled me off the fence and got me back into the car, but not before snapping the picture. Uh -huh. <laughs> and on the mat, I have the blown up version of the picture now, and it says, Dawning of a Love Affair. Oh, <laughs> that's a great story, too. So with the Oaks, uh, not too many people have written about the Kentucky Oaks. But Let's you put it this way. Yeah. Try none. I am really? the first. You are the you first. Are the first. <laughs> okay. Wow. wow. So tell us about this book and what all is encompassed in it. Well, I've gone back through 150 years of Oaks history. Not too wow. many people realize that the Oaks, the sister race mm -hmm. to the Derby, is only two days younger than the Derby. They are the first and second oldest continuously run races in the United States. Yeah, that's amazing. So you but, had to dig a lot through mm -hmm. all kinds of material, I'm sure. Right. Well, let me throw a trivia question at you. Uh-oh. You uh -oh. <laughs> said you can name the first winner of the Kentucky Derby. I right? do know this one. Okay. Aristot Aristotle's, am I saying it right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, who was the first winner of the Oaks? I don't uh, know. I don't know. Yes. I don't. Dude, tell us. Well, that's where the Oaks has come up from. The first winner was a filly named Vinaigrette. She won over oh. five rivals. Wow. And at the time, the Oaks was just kind of an afterthought. Right. And now, over the 150 years of its existence, it's grown to the major gala that we have today, where fashion and charity are celebrated just as much as the horse and all things feminine. Yes. But, you know, uh, I can't mm. wait to read these books. Talk about all three books you have here. Well, what I have here, the one in front is the Kentucky Oaks. That's my most recent release. That's come out through the University Press of Kentucky. Uh-huh. And that is the entire 150-year history of the Oaks. I've chosen to tell it in kind of a storyteller's fashion in hitting on the high points of the various stories of uh, who's behind the Oaks, who are the vague horses and figures in the Oaks. Uh, so you'll find everything from information, for instance, about Mary Kime, who's the only woman to have trained an Oaks winner. Mm. and was a major figure in the pioneering of women taking more active roles in racing in the 1960s. Wow. Yeah. She actually was the first person to give Diane Crump a name up on her horse. Yeah. Really? And while Diane didn't get to ride that day because the horse didn't draw into the ways, Kime kind of acted as a mentor for her and helped her keep going while she was breaking into racing. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And then the name of your other two books here. Well, the one about black gold is called Dream Derby, the myth and legend of Dra black gold. Uh -huh. And it really does contain a dream, though not quite the way Miss Henry put it. Uh -huh. uh, what had happened was that an Oklahoma rancher named Al Hoots had a little mare that he loved named You See It. And you may have heard the story that she was claimed at Juarez and he used a shotgun to threaten the people coming to get her and then took off with the mare on the next train out of town. Oh, wow. 
That's not quite the case, but he did love the mare very much, and he was sure we, that he could breed a winner from her. Mm. Okay, he, we're going to have to get this book. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we are out of time. Uh, but you have left a cliffhanger. I know. Like, I mean, this is a cliffhanger. I'm on the edge of my seat. Yes. I, 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 I'm so excited to yes. read these, Tam. Thank you so much Thank for you coming so much. in. Please no, come back. No Please problem. Come back. I'd be okay. glad to. You're amazing. Fantastic. You're amazing. And you can get these books. All of the information is up on the screen. Check it out. It's perfect for this week. Thank you so mm. much, Avalyn.